Good morning to you on this Monday morning. I hope that you had a wonderful weekend. Today we continue with 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Today we start reading from verse 7. But if the ministry of death and letters engraved on stones came with glory, so that the sons of Israel could not look intently at the face of Moses because of the glory of his face fading as it was, how will the ministry of the Spirit fail to be even more with glory? For if the ministry of condemnation has glory, much more does the ministry of righteousness abound in glory. For indeed what had glory in this case has no glory because of the glory that surpasses it. For if that which fades away was with glory, much more that which remains is in glory. Therefore having such a hope, we use great boldness in our speech. And we are not like Moses who used to put a veil over his face so that the sons of Israel would not look intently at the end of what was fading away. But their minds were hardened, for until this very day at the reading of the Old Covenant the same veil remains unlifted, because it is removed in Christ. But to this day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lays over their heart. But whenever a person turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. So Paul here is reminding us of what we saw last week, that the letter of the law kills, but the Spirit gives life. The Old Testament is good, it's pure. The Ten Commandments are wonderful, but the problem is that we're not able to keep them. And so the Ten Commandments condemn us. And the only way that we can be saved is if we could keep the Ten Commandments fully, God would have to accept us. But we can't do it, so the only way to be saved is in Jesus Christ. And when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Saviour, He who kept the commandments perfectly, His sacrifice paid our sin debt in full. And then we are no longer under the law, but we are free in the Spirit. Moses' face shone when he came down from the mountain. His face shone when he met with God. And the people could not look upon him. So he had a veil over his face. The glory was so wonderful. So wonderful was God's word. And Paul's point here is that the New Testament is even more wonderful, has even greater glory. Because it is the ministry of life and righteousness. And then he said, we are not like Moses. We don't have to cover our face. We, we bring God's glory to you. The problem with even people today in Israel, who the children of Israel who read the Old Testament, they have a veil over their hearts. Their hearts are hardened. And it's only in Christ that it can be removed. Their minds were hardened. For until this very day at the reading of the Old Covenant, the same veil remains unlifted because it is only removed in Christ. Whenever Moses is read, a veil lays over their heart. But whenever a person turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. And that is the case with everybody who is not a Christian. There's a veil over their heart. They're blind. They don't know often that they're blind, but they are. And that's why Newton wrote when he came to know the Lord Jesus Christ, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. When we turn to Jesus, our eyes are opened. We are filled with the spirit of life and freedom, and the veil is lifted off, and we are free, free indeed. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for salvation in Jesus. We thank you that our place in heaven is not dependent upon us keeping the Ten Commandments, because we can't do it. But we thank you for your commandments, because they do show us the right way. We thank you, Jesus, that you died on the cross in our place, that you bore our sin debt in full, that you paid the price for us, that we could be God's children. As we begin this week, we ask, Lord, that you would just take us by the hand and lead us and guide us, shape us and mould us, help us to walk in your truth and in your light. May we walk in the freedom of the Spirit and be free from the letter of the law. Help us to show your love to all people. As your word directs, Lord, we pray for our governments and all in authority. We pray that you would give them wisdom and understanding. We pray that you would cleanse our parliaments of all who are dishonest and unfaithful. We pray, Lord, for that heart that doesn't know you yet, the heart that still has a veil over it, that today would be the day that veil would be removed. We ask your blessing upon those who are suffering. We think especially, Lord, of those in the Ukraine and other places where there's conflict. We pray for the sick, the dying, the needy. We pray for all who are in despair. We commit all to you. And Lord, today we join together in praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. So have a wonderful day, God willing. I'll see you all again tomorrow.